Hi, I'm Jasmine Young. I would like to be called Jazz. I'm 34 with two kids. I went to Sherwood High School and graduated in 2005, and I'm a returning citizen. Black is beautiful. Black is strong. Black is resilient. Black is magnificent. Black is me. Black is every other person in this world that has gone through struggles in the past and overcome them, even the ones that are still trying to overcome. In my immediate family, I have a little sister, and of course I have my mom. I didn't grow up with my father. Actually, my father had a drug addiction, so I never really met my father. He called me when I was 16, no, I was 15, and he was in jail at the time, and he said he promised he'd come see me you know, when he got out, but I never seen him. The next time I seen my father was in 2003, and that's when he was deceased. I saw him at his funeral. So it's just me, my mom, and my sister. And of course, at 16, I had my son. So my son, so it was all of us inside the household. I got pregnant at 15 and had my son at 16. And like I said, I was in a predominantly white school. So that's not normal where I was at. I was the only girl and I was black on top of that. So I honestly felt like I was a statistic at the time, black and pregnant, but I didn't let that deter me. I was determined to finish high school. so. I stayed in high school until they put me on bed rest, and I did homeschooling until I was able to come back to school. But I got a lot of backlash. People wrote on the bathroom walls about me. They you know, just said all types of nasty things. People even I thought with my friends would say stuff behind my back. And you know, that just really like, you know, put like, like a burden on me because I felt like since that point on, I had something to prove. Since I was little, I hated my skin. I used to try to scrub my skin with a Brillo pad because I just thought it was dirt. I never understood that it was my skin color and this is the way I was born. I've um, kind of struggled with being um, a dark skinned person inside, you know, with our community because I feel like there's um, racism within our own black community. So when you say black skin, I always feel like I'm being targeted or talked about when I hear black skin because it's always this dark skin, light skin war going on. So now at 34, I'm so proud to have black skin and I've never been prouder in my life to have black skin. But before then I've been, you know, I had low self-esteem because of it, I guess the colorism. You know, I was incarcerated for four and a half years and coming back into society and you know, having to relearn everything and rebuild my life, I feel like my sentence is a permanent sentence. And the reason that I say that is, I'm always gonna have barriers on top of me, not just the label of being a felon, but everything else that comes with it. And I think it makes it especially harder because I am a black woman returning back to society. So it's like another statistic that's placed on me. Had a baby when I was 16. Oh, I went to um, prison. So I feel like it's expect, people expect that of me. And I feel like I'm still trying to prove like I was when I was 16 to get over this. So like I'm pushing hard to show people that coming home, no, it's not easy, but you know, we need to lean on each other ones that have come home and overcome that because I'm overcoming that. I'm opening businesses, I'm trying to do nonprofits and I'm trying to stay positive at the same time and bring light into the situation of incarceration. Prison is what set me down to really understand like, I need to help people, but help people how? And that's where I came up with my business that I wanna help people with society and incarceration, you know, get the knowledge and get the tools in order to transition back into society and, you know, have confidence. A lot of people coming home don't have the confidence. My story is you can overcome anything. I mean, look at me, I had a child at 16. I've been to prison. I was in a four and a half domestic, four and a half years domestic abuse relationship, I mean, I could have died. And I'm still here, I'm still standing, so just think of somebody in, in a worse situation than you. You have to look at it that way. People are going through way, wor way worse stuff than you. So I just feel like my story is I'm here to motivate people that they can overcome anything.